Now let's take a look at modeling encoders in BHDL. Uh, BHDL, again, is going to really show its power when you go to model these when you start using the more uh, higher level B modeling techniques such as conditional signal assignments and selective signal assignments. So let's recall what we were doing. We had, we designed a, we designed a one-hot encoder uh, using the classical digital design approach and we basically ended up with a circuit like this. So we saw that if we don't care about prioritization, we use don't cares, we're going to end up with a circuit like this. So we could directly implement that in VHDL using a concurrent signal assignment with logical operators. So what does that look like? Well, first of all, let's, take a, let's look at our model here of a one-hot decoder. So what I'm going to have here is this was my original description of functionality. And notice that we're going to now model the inputs, the four inputs, as a four-bit vector so that you can you you'll get used to seeing that it's easier to do that, uh, kind of trying to get more compact modeling approaches. And then the output we're going to call it Y and Z. And we, we still have the same truth table where the output 0, 0 occurs when D is asserted, 0, 1 occurs when C is asserted, et cetera, et cetera. So now here's our entities. We have, we're, well, let's call it encoder 1 hot 4 to 2 is, and we have two inputs, or excuse me, one input, A, B, C, D, notice that's a vector and it's 3 down to 0, so it's 4 bits wide, and then you have Y and Z, and it's 1 down to 0, so it's a 2-bit vector. And we can simply implement our, our classical circuit by just putting in here that you're going to have this circuit that we found. So let me, let me get it on the page here so you can see what we're actually doing. And this is, this is a good example of how you assign with, uh, with to a vector, but you're just trying to assign a scalar, or to assign to 1 bit. So there's our circuit right there. Let me put this like this. So this is our circuit right here that we're trying to implement. And it's nothing more than two OR gates. And so let's look at, there we go. Let's look at Y. So in this vector right here, we're trying to assign to the output Y. Well, Y is the most significant bit within the YZ vector. So what we do is we index it with the integer 1. So that represents the most significant bit. And then what we do is we assign it ABCD, which is a vector name, and then index 3 represents the most significant bit, which would, mapping to our original uh, circuit, is simply A. So that represents that if A, B, C, and D were joined together as a vector, this would be bit 3, this would be bit 0, this would be bit 2, and this would be bit, I don't know, bit 1 and bit 2. And so you got 0, 1, 2. So that's how you address it. And then in a similar fashion, if this was our, our y, z vector, this would be index 1 and this would be index 0. So notice that index 3 represents A ORed with index 2, which is A and B. And that is exactly what we have over here. Then when you come over to here and we do this, this OR gate right here, we're going to have index 0, which is going to be, we're going to assign to z. And that's going to be index 3 and index 1. So index 3 and index 1, which is nothing more than A or with C. And you can see that that is A or with C. So this is the concurrent signal assignments with logical operators. And again, this has really not done anything other than just provide a text-based net list of this schematic. So it didn't really give us anything uh, magical in terms of ESGL. However, let's look at the conditional signal assignment and see how easy it is to model this behavior. So what we're going to do here is all I'm going to do is I'm assigning to Y and Z. And so in a conditional signal assignment, all I simply do is assign to Y and Z. So YZ gets 0, 0 under a certain input condition, which in this situation the input vector was 0, 0, 0, 1. And then otherwise it gets 0, 1 when A, B, C, D is 0, 0, 1, 0. So I'm basically typing in this truth table. I'm typing in exactly what I'm trying to implement here. So I list what I'm going to assign to the output based on what the input codes are. So it's a very readable, a very compact way to model the behavior. And again, we're just going to allow the synthesizer to create that combinational logic circuit for us. But this is a, this is a very quick way to model a larger MSI circuit. Now take a look at a selected signal assignment. Selected signal assignment is, is even less logic. So let me try to get, let me get the truth table on here so you can see it. And all you do here is you say with, and you give it the input. 
So in this situation, it was A, B, C, D, and you say select. And you just list out what is Y, Z, our output, going to get assigned. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, excuse me, 1, 0, 1, 1, when these guys, okay? Now, here's two very important things that we need to look at when in this conditional signal assignment here and the selected signal assignment here. Notice this. Notice these two situations right here. We have 0, 0, and we have 0, so we have else 0, 0, and we have 0, 0, and others. The reason we had to do that is because when you do this conditional signal assignment, so this is a conditional signal assignment, this only provides four of the possible 16 input codes. So you didn't provide a complete expression or a complete description of behavior unless you provided what the other input codes will correspond to output-wise. So if you didn't provide that, the synthesizer, the, the, it won't even compile. The synthesizer will say, I don't know what you want to do for the other one, so you have to tell me. So you'd say else zero zero. Now when you do that, it really implies you're no longer using don't cares. You are, sim you are explicitly stating that any other input code will result in an output of zero zero. You do it down here in the selected signal assignment, so this is the selected signal assignment, by doing zero zero win others. So those are the those are kind of the catch-all clauses for the other two modeling behaviors. But again, you can see how VHDL becomes very powerful when you go to model these MSI logic circuits.